think this volume all the way up right here. Did you? Hallelujah, all praises to the Most High, the power, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Honor and glory of his only begotten beloved son, the Holy Messiah. Long to the King Yahoo, I'm your brother Malachi Maccabee. Honor humility, STL, Hebrew Israelite Radio Network. Sect of the Nazarene or the Melchizedek camp out of St. Louis and just building with my beautiful wife this evening, chopping over some scripts, various topics, you know what I'm saying? Uh, edifying, you know, uh, a script spitter's job is never done, or just what it is. Uh, my love got a few questions over the script. We got this up and coming, uh, Feast of Weeks coming up, Seven Complete Sabbaths. Uh, following the Passover, plus one day, 50 days, you know what I'm saying? They call it the Feast of Pentecost today, or uh, the Feast of Weeks. Uh, in Hebrew, it's Kog Shabua, Feast of Weeks, Kog Feast Shabua Weeks. So uh, let's get it in, love. I know you got you know a few questions. First thing about Pentecost or whatever. We're going to go over look at Pentecost Feast, what it means, uh, getting to... And destroy that, that that replacement theology of uh uh Israel has been replaced by the white heathen church, which is another damn lie. Uh but also the role of uh any believing Gentiles as well, because everything gotta be brought into the be put on the table, should I say. Uh it gotta be all about truth when it's done talking. Uh so we're gonna talk a little bit about the kingdom that's coming. You understand how Israel is still and will always be the most high's chosen people, the promised seed of Abraham. You understand that's who the Messiah was sent to. Uh, but that don't mean no other nation can't serve our heavenly power. Uh, we be a light to the Gentiles through our actions, though. You know what I'm saying? Just like we influence the we influence the heathens today in all wickedness. You see people with niggas in Japan with their pants sagging. Everybody want to rap. Be a rap star. Now, did we individually go sit down and, and show them how to rap, or did they peep our actions? They they copy. You know? So same thing when they say be enlightened to the Gentiles. You know, we supposed to teach the other nations and all that. We do that through our actions and how we interact with each other. You understand? When they see how we move and operate and regulate, they be like, man, we need to be like them. It shouldn't be that hard because. They trying to be like us now, and we evil as all hell. You feel me? So it's even the same thing with the scripture. It don't mean you go sit down with some heathens. So what they got? What they got? They eat away from us. The heathens. Well, actually, no. We decided to want to be like them, and then we just outdid them. Cause we the most highest people. You understand? We just outdid them on a major level. It was like you remember not that long ago. Uh, a Negro wouldn't be caught being no sodomite, no homosexual at all. But now, right here in St. Louis, you drive down the Del Mar Loop, there's a little strip right there, and it's the majority of the homosexuals are us, our people, because we outdo them, even in being evil. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't it don't pay to it don't pay at all to uh, mimic the other nation. That's why he say, envy not your oppressor and choose none of his way. Matter of fact, grab it real quick. Proverbs 3 and 31. Scripture tell us to envy thou not your oppressor and choose none of his ways. Also, learn not the way of the heathen. Is another, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Proverbs 3 and 31. Shout out to my brother, Karath Zaya. My brother brought me a staff from Israel. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 8 through 10. Blessings. You know what I'm saying? He just brought me this from Israel. My brother went over to Israel, Tel Arad, you dig, and they kept the uh, Pesach, the Pesach, the Passover feast over there. And the brother back in the States, brother actually put this in my hand two days ago, man. So shout out to Karata Zaya. You dig, much love for that brother. You know what I'm saying? And what he's doing for the nation. But uh, let's get there real quick. Proverbs 3 and 31. Uh, we are not to be learning the ways of the heathen, period. You know what I'm saying? We already got a... Uh, Law, uh, heavenly law from the Most High. That's what this Feast of Pentecost is coming up about. Or Kog Shabua, Feast of Weeks. It's about the fiery law that we received, you know what I'm saying, from the Most High. And how we were put on charge and notice to uh, keep these commandments. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, and through that, the na other nations will see how we will operate and say that's the wisdom of the heavenly creator operating through them because we keep these commandments. You see what I'm saying? Of course, we fumbled, we tripped, but that's the first thing you got to do when you give your people back an identity. You got to give them rules because it rules everything. I should Proverbs 3 and 31, and one of the rules is stop being a heathen. You know what I'm saying? People be thinking we even you're racist or whatever. It's just the truth. Why are we trying to be like some white folk or some Arabs or some Africans or some Asians? Why? When we got the heavenly laws from the most side and we supposed to civilize the entire earth. He said the earth is ours. So Proverbs 3, 31 and 32. What does it say, love? Envy not thine oppressor and choose none of his ways. So it says envy thou not your oh, oppressor, right? And choose what some of his ways? None of his ways. None of his ways. Uh. And now is that advice? <laughs> is that, is that well, you know, if I was you, no, nah, that's a commandment. That's a charge. Don't envy your oppressor. Don't choose none of his ways. What verse thirty two say? For the forward is abomination to the Lord, mm -hmm. but his secret is with the his secret is with the righteous. The righteous are those that submit themselves to the orders of the Most High. You understand? The abominable are the forward. Those who are trying to be like the nations. The heathens. You see what I'm saying? And he say, learn not the way of the heathen. Grab Jeremiah the 10th chapter. Jeremiah 10, 1 and 2. Well, you can read 1 through 4 for real, but that's a custom that we've learned to do even to this very day. Yeah, Jeremiah 10, 1 through like 4. I believe it is. Yeah, that's about the whole. See, look, you look at you, you own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's uh, and you know how it is. You know, you come into this truth and you tell your people flat out, like, look, I ain't doing that no more. This is one of the scriptures, Israelite one hundred and one. One of the first scriptures we learn is about the Christmas ritual that has nothing to do with the God of Israel. All right, what does say, love? Yeah, yeah, read one through four. Carry the word which the Lord speaketh unto thee, O house of Israel. Mm -hmm. So he's talking to us, right? Mm -hmm. O house of Israel. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. learn not the way of the heathen. Do what? Learn not the way of the heathen. That means don't do what the heathens are doing. Don't do it. Don't learn it. Stay away from it. Envy thou not your oppressor. Don't choose none of his ways. Go ahead, love. And be not dis dismayed at the signs of heaven. Uh-huh. Or the heathen or dismayed. Heathens have super, they develop their superstition behind. So is that like the same thing as uh, astrology? Yeah, it can be. It can be if you ain't careful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it tell you in Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? So he, he gave lights in the heavens as signals to us. So we would know, you know what I'm saying? That's his calendar. So we would know. Judgment is coming. You start seeing blood moons. You start seeing falling stars and all that. So it don't mean you can't look at the heavens, but they develop a whole superstition behind this thing. Astrology. You know what I'm saying? And you start seeing people like that. They'll uh, plan certain dates and events based off the position in other stars. You going too far when you do all that. You understand? Way too far. Go ahead. Verse three, for mm -hmm. well, the customs of the people are vain. They are what? Are vain. Vain mean what, love? Worthless. Worthless. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. For when cut is a tree out of the forest, mm -hmm. the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Right. They deck it with, with silver and with gold. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. They deck it with silver and with gold. Yeah. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. You see that? They deck it with silver and gold. You know, it's a Christmas song out called Silver and Gold. Blew my mind when I first read that script. Like, man, that has to be talking about a Christmas tree. But it didn't just start in Jeremiah time. It started back in the garden. Tree worship. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, like even if you're just dealing with it verbatim. You know what I'm saying? What, stay away from that tree right there. You feel me? And that fruit right there. Because you're going to die if you deal with that. You see what I'm saying? So the whole... Uh, custom of it, the foundation of it, go back to the garden, actually. But like, the whole point was, learn not the way of the heathen. Don't do what the heathen is doing. You feel me? These are traditions of men that
that, that even the Messiah he spoke against. Messiah spoke against the traditions of his people. You feel me? Let alone the tradition of some heathen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the traditions of man had nothing to do with the Mosiah at all. Our people are caught up into that. Like you don't want to give them babies no Christmas and you grew up doing it. You know how that extra. You know what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with the Mosiah though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as the years go on, you get stronger and stronger. My people know better than even invite me no more. Like, I don't get invited to none of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be called a Scrooge and all that extra madness. So, we just real quick, we learned that you're not supposed to be envying your oppressor. Let's get two scriptures in the New Testament and then we'll get down to this Pentecost topic. Uh, go to Matthew 15, Matthew 15, 7 through 9. I believe it is. Matthew 15, 7 through 9. And this Yahweh shot the Messiah is speaking against the traditions of his people. Because they had traditions like unless you wash wash before you sit down and eat and go through these rituals that you're unclean. Matthew 15. Matthew the 15th chapter. 7 through 9. 7 through 9. Uh-huh. Yeah. Been studying. Yeah, go ahead. Hypocrite. Mm. Well, did uh, Isaiah? Yeah, that's that, that's the Greek way to say Isaiah. Oh, okay. Isaiah the prophet. So the Messiah called men hypocrites. But that's how you pronounce Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah, go ahead. He hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh. These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth uh -huh. and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Meaning it's all lip service today. Yeah, that's how the spirit. That's how the spirit work. Love, just how the spirit move. You know what I'm saying? You be thinking about a scripture, where is it? And then later on, you be studying, and you run right into it. The supernatural, supernatural. But he called them hypocrites. It's just lip service that everybody claim they. Lo I love the Lord. Everybody claim they love the Most High. Until you be like, all right, well, what he said? If he your master, then what's up? What he commands you to do? If you if he your master, then you his servant. You see? And masters give orders to their servants. So what the most high command us to do? You dig? So go ahead. What else to say? Okay. Yeah. But in vain they do worship me. Uh -huh. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So he said, there go the word vain again, eh? See? Just like we read in Jeremiah 10. Vain mean what? Worthless. So it's worthless worship if you are incorporating traditions and teachings of man and acting as if they are commandments of God or commandments of the Most High God. It's worthless. You see? And our people today are, are just so caught up in it, it's crazy. And they look at you like you crazy. You understand? They ain't believe. Grab Colossians. Colossians 2. That's in the New Testament here. Colossians 2. Uh... Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians 2. Matter of fact, 6 to 8. Colossians 2. Yes, ma'am. That's right, love. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Yeah, Hamashiach, Yahweh shot it. In Hebrew, you know what I'm saying? Messiah. All right, go ahead. So walk ye in him. Uh -huh. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith. So as you receive him, walk in him. Do what he did. You see what I'm saying? I was saying it said rooted and built up. You got a strong foundation and you built up when you exercise in this thing. Okay, that's what it's gonna take. It's established in the faith. All right, go ahead. As ye have been taught, mm -hmm. abounding therein with thanksgiving. Yeah, they ain't talking about uh, the, the the last Thursday of November. You feel me? You can be thankful whenever. Go ahead. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit. What with the word vain again? Vain. You keep running into vain, right? But what does spoil mean? How we do our little baby? How we do our new baby? What spoil? Is that is that what that spoil mean? No, I don't think so. What it mean? <laughs> you don't know <laughs> and spoil also mean rob. Oh, okay. Rob you. It ain't like, you know, we show too much love to my little baby. But I thought they had another meaning too. Is uh, like when they went to war and they got the spoil. Yeah, you're taking their stuff. 
So your salary. Yeah. Spoil you good. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's spoil. Like it's called the booty of war. Or you spoil them after you. That's in the law too. You know, you come through conquer certain people. So it's just a bunch of men. Yeah, but it's, it's still the same thing. Something can get took from you through vain deceit. Now, what can get took from you? Your salvation. Uh, yeah, so you can be spoiled or robbed of your salvation by tripping off the traditions of men. Vain or worthless deceit. Go ahead. Okay. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit mm-hmm. after the tradition of men. There go them traditions of men. There go that word vain again. Go ahead. After the rudiments uh-huh. of the world right. and not after Right. Not after the Messiah. Mm-hmm. Rudiments are principles of the world, ways of the world. Mm-hmm. You see? Last one, First John 2, 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Not 15 through 17. 1 John 2, 15. Uh, 1 John. Not the Gospel of John, but 1 John. Chapter 1 John. 2. Yeah. Chapter two. I say 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. The rudiments of the world. And that's why this says love not the world. Now we it come off harsh. Like man you so harsh and cold. But the scriptures command us not to love the world. Don't trip off your, your oppressor. You know what I'm saying. Do what thus saith the most high. And be confident in what you're doing. When I walk in a spot. I might not have a dime in my pocket. But I walk in like I own the place. Because the, the future. <laughs> the, the next world is coming to the faithful servants of the most high. We're going to be rulers of this earth, right here. You know what I'm saying? So I already walk in like I run it. I ain't going to lie to you. That's just how I roll. I, yeah, I got to, you know, shout out to Daniel Solomon. We got an Air Force of Angels with us. I believe that. I walk like I just got a whole army behind me and I ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> but that's how we got to be. Because you royalty. All right, go ahead. What does it say? Love not the world. Uh-huh. Neither the things that are in the world. Right. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I thought God so loved the world, though. What were you talking about? Wayne's world? Israel. The world of Israel. That's the world that the Most High loved so much that he sent his only begotten son. The world of Israel. The society of Israel. 12 tribes of Israel. So he's telling us, don't love the world. What world? He's talking about your people, Israel. He's talking about the Gentile nations and what they do. You know what I'm saying? We're not supposed to love and try to copy them and, and, and try to mock them and do what they do. We're supposed to be influencing or civilizing them. You feel me? And it's crazy. And our wickedness, they still try to mimic us. You feel me? Chinese and Japanese rappers. You feel me? I seen a, uh, uh, I think a Chinese heathen on Vlad TV the other day, uh, missing a tooth and all that. Talking about how he went and did a 10 year bid, which he was using the word nigga, had to shoot me some niggas. He told that dude, Vlad White. Yeah, Vlad White. He a damn Russian or a, a, a Serbian or something like that. But it, it's crazy that, that this Chinese cat, you wouldn't even think he was Chinese if you just heard him. So he's just some regular cat off the East Coast. Man, this movie is Chinese. You know what I'm saying? And every, all his talk got a New York brim on. You dig? He rapped. You know what I'm saying? He talked about how he even so dope and, and, and shooting. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my. He's, he's mimicking. He's mimicking Israel and our wickedness on the left hand side. We call for them to want to be like us and uh, be a light unto them and righteous. If we can do it being evil, we can do it a million times more following the orders of the Most High. You see what I'm saying? All right, where you at? Uh, verse 16. Yeah. For all that is in the world, mm-hmm. the lust of the flesh, yeah. and the lust of the eyes, uh-huh. and, the proud, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but right. it is of the world. But it's of the world. All that is in the world, the lust of the eyes and all that, what we lust after. What we desire to have, all oh, that's of the world. It ain't of the Father. Nobody said, I don't love the world. Go ahead. Verse 17. Mm-hmm. And the world passes away. Yeah. 
And the lust thereof. And all that lust. Lust ain't just necessarily sex. You know what I'm saying? Oh, big booty Judy. You know what I'm saying? Lust ain't necessarily that. People lust to do a whole bunch of stuff. And you it really come out during them holidays. You tell telling people like, look, you ain't supposed to be I know what the Bible say, but uh you're gonna do it anyway, right? Because you lust to do it. You know what I'm saying? You got an overwhelming desire to go against your power, to go against your Elohim, your God. Go ahead. But he that do with the will of God abideth forever. Abideth what? Forever. So if we do the will of the most high, that means we got eternal life coming to us. Forever. And that's what we should be aiming to do. One more on that, James 4 and 4. Can you get two witnesses? This is what we do. Get two witnesses with it, James 4 and 4. And then we'll get to this Pentecost feast. Or the feast of weeks, Cox your boy. No, that's new. That's new. That's new. That's all that's around Hebrews. The Hebrews and all that. Book of James 4 and 4. Same thing. Love not the world. Yeah. Yeah. James is uh English for Jacob. Yeah, James and Jacob mean the same thing. Yeah, you'll find it. The always table of contents is your best friend if you can't find it. There you go. See, I knew you find it. I knew you find it. James 4 and 4. James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is in enmity with God? Yeah. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is, is the enemy of God. Yeah, in, enmity with the most high is hatred with the most high. Don't you know that friendship of the world is. Enmity or hatred with the most high. Now, there's adultery and adulteresses. That adulterer and adulteresses can be physical and spiritual. When you're a lover of the world and you off into worshiping strange gods and all that, you a whore. Remember, we already got a husband, which is the most high. As a nation, we his bride. You know what I'm saying? So if we dealing with any other god, that makes us a whore. Makes you 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 committing adultery. That's why you say, look, friendship with the world is enmity or hatred with the Most High. Whosoever is a friend of the world, love of the world, is an enemy of the Most High. And all our people love the world. Can't tell them that. But when you come and be like, you know, certain things, yeah, y'all don't have no fun. I mean, I have plenty of fun. You know what I'm saying? Striving to be like the Most High. It's a lot of desires that I used to have that I don't do no more. You be heavy in the sports. Act like your life is miserable. Like you're a turf horse or a stone horse. Nah. 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 I'm having plenty of fun serving the most. It's all good. It just, I done fell out of love with the world. You can have the prick. That's all you talk about. Mm hmm. Say, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, I talk about the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> you're brainwashed. Yes, my mind is washed <laughs> from filth. <laughs> my mind is washed from all type of filth. Yes, I've been brainwashed. They don't want to hear that. That nigga got out brainwashed over there, you know, all that extra stuff. But uh, let's get into it, too. Let's go to Exodus 19. Exodus 19, uh, 1 through 6. Let's get to this Pentecost feast. The first, the first, the first month, now, the, the shop of the Feast of Weeks is, is the third month. It's the feast we have in the third month. Passover is the first month. That was April the 11th at sundown. My baby had just turned seven months. He did April 11th at sundown. That was the 14th. He was seven months on I mean, Passover. You be nine months in a you know a few weeks. It's on the 11th. Yeah, something like that. Little baby. That's daddy baby too. We chilling all day today. Catching up on a few things. But, uh, so it's the third month feast, you feel me? Because April, April uh, was the first month. Because that's when Passover is the 14th day of the first month. All right, so April, first month. May, second month. June will be third month. Let's read Exodus 19, 1 through 6. Remember, Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks has to do with the commemoration of us getting the law. All right, then we're going to bring it full speed to the New Testament as well. Go ahead. In the third month, 
children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt. Mm-hmm. The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. You no, know, say the third month, right? Mm-hmm. Now the feast is next uh, first day of the next of next week. We were six days, five days out. It's June the fourth. It's next. It's the next first day coming up. What they call Sunday. You know what I'm saying? So that's the third. We'll be in the third month. You see what I'm saying? We'll be right on point. So Passover, we leave captivity. The third month is when we get to Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb and we start receiving the law. All right. So you see us tracking. We've been left captivity. Now you got to give these people. Who were slaves for you know, hundreds of years? Now they got to receive the proper instruction on how to act before they inherit what the Most High promised them. This is our constitution, our legislation. Put it that way. You feel me? Give it to us by the finger of the Most High. All right, go ahead. It's a nation thing. It ain't a religious thing. A nation has to have some type of laws governing it, don't it? All right, but well, these are laws right here. Nation, national, thing. Nation, national thing. Come on. Nation, national thing. 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 Come on. For they were departed from Rephidim, yeah. yeah, yeah, and were come to the desert of Sinai, mm-hmm. and had pitched in the wilderness. Yeah, and there Israel camped before the mountain. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, "Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel." Okay, so. So that's that's Christ talking to God. Talking to talking to, to God. Did he say no? I think because it says Moses went up to God, mm-hmm. and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, so, "Good." Called unto Moses out of the mountain, saying, "But who's the mouthpiece of the Most High?" That Christ, would be right? the Messiah. So, so all it's all three of them. Is the Messiah at this point? Yeah, but the Most High never leaves us strong. Of course, of course. I, yeah. I know, but I'm saying like do you, I don't know. Yeah, just like if I mean a good thing would be Exodus three, the angel that was in the bush talking to Moses. You know what I'm saying? That was an angel, but the angel was, said, "I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob." That wasn't the Most High himself. You right. feel me? That was, was that. Okay. That was that's the Messiah who was speaking to him. Okay. That's what we've been dealing with the whole time. That's the what the nine messianics can't catch up with. But I'm just talking about for this part. That's it's the same thing. Okay. It's like if he speak, if if, if, he, if the Most High is speaking, or even if his presence is there. That's his son at his right hand coming to do his bid. Even even the uh when you read Wisdom of Solomon the eighteenth chapter uh, about what happened during Passover night, what they call the death angel or the destroyer. You know what I'm saying? It says the word of the most high leaped down from the throne of heaven. And that the word of the most high is the Messiah. John one and one through one and four. And it was the word, and the word was God, with God. The same was in the beginning with God. You see what I'm saying? Let us make man in our image. Genesis 126. But the Messiah had always been there. He just was manifested in the flesh in the New Testament. And look at that topic. is so deep, most people can't even grasp it. Even those that claim they believe in him. They think we radical for believing that. But all throughout, when you get to read, and you be like, hold on, there's something else going on here. You feel me? The Most High never vacated his throne. All right, but go ahead. It's just like it's just like uh, uh, today when you're dealing with kings or you're dealing with presidents or whatever, right? The president don't gotta show up. He can send a representative. Yeah, yeah. The movie Three Hundred. King sent messages through there. You know what I'm saying? He sent in the authority of the king to deliver a message. Same thing. But go ahead. What else to say? He has seen what I did unto the Egyptians, mm-hmm. and how I buried you on the easy thing, and brought you unto myself. Yeah, but I done bodied these Egyptians, laid them down, drowned a lot of them in the Red Sea as well. Go ahead. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, mm-hmm. and keep my covenant, mm-hmm. then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. What does peculiar mean? My treasure. There we go. There we go. He said, you take heed to my voice, take heed to my covenant. Keep my commandments. You'll be special to me. Who don't want to be special to the Most High? Man, we ain't in my special ed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who don't, don't want to believe, don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for us that believe, we aiming to be great 
and we aiming to be close or special to them. You know what I'm saying? We're not aiming to be no just mediocre Negro. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. What else you say? Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Right. Mm-hmm. For all the earth is mine. Oof. Hold on. They say, what about the people? A peculiar treasure, what? Unto me above all people. No, equal with all people. All people. Above all people. Beneath all people. Above. <laughs> so, all right now. So, if it's saying above, do the most I play favorites? He does. You feel me? That means you're superior. We are. It, it look for real. A lot of our people don't want to hear it. Heathens definitely don't want to hear it because they've been, you know, they they swear they are masters. But our people do not like that. That's one thing I've learned being an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? Over a decade now, is that our people do not like the fact that we are better. The Most High deems us better than everybody. Our people hate that because a Negro can't fathom in his mind. That he's not, that he ain't just a mechanic. You feel me? That he ain't just a weed man. He can't fathom in his mind, hey, you a king, you're royalty. And one day you're going to rule this earth in righteousness. Our people can't even fathom that. But the Most High called us above all people. Why you think them Jewish people who stole our identity believe they above everybody? Believe they better than everybody? In which they not, like that's, that's almost laugh. That matter of fact, ain't almost. It is laughable. Them heathens ain't good at nothing but stealing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't breaking no records, doing nothing. They busy coke telling off us. You know what I'm saying? Even down to the hip hop thing, they, they stole hip hop and put their whole little demonic influence on the heathens like Rick Rubin and uh, Liar Cohen, Leor Cohen, and all them. Jewish imposter Edomite bastards who basically control hip hop and got all these niggas coming out uh, rapping on that homosexual sodomite vibration. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Lee, that's liar. That's Leor Cohen. He, his last name means priest, but he's Jewish. So he ain't good at nothing but co telling and stealing. They not know the best athletes and entertainers and singers and and whatever it be, man, you feel me? They ain't good at nothing. That right there say we above Israel is above all people. That's who we are. And they gonna come at Kendrick Lamar too. You know what I'm saying? I pray the brother endure. But they they they, already did. they got their hooks in them though. But they gonna come at him because now he know he an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? And that probably got them bastards infuriated. But it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. What else to say? Six, mm-hmm. and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Ooh. And a holy nation. Ooh, a kingdom of priests. You see, we the priests of the most high. The, uh, the whole nation is. And out of our nation, we have priests and all that. When Yahweh Shah is the high priest after our order now, the Mikhail's deck order. But we, we as a nation are the priests of the most high. Meaning uh the lively oracles, the living word. Gave to Israel, and we civilized the nations. You know what I'm saying? Through what the Most High gave us. Get down to lay down, conquer the earth with this gospel. It's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth. A kingdom of priests. That's beautiful. Go ahead. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel. Bani Yashua, Bani Yisrael, sons of Israel. Feel me for children, same same thing. So look, she is the third month, right? So when we say that the feast of weeks is about the, uh, us receiving the law at the mount, you just got a glimpse into it right there. All right, then the Most High was shouting down commands. You know, if you keep reading, you'll see. Mm-hmm. We gonna jump though. The most High was shouting down commands. He was hitting it, hitting them so hard that they was like, oh no. When you get over to Exodus twenty, is when he started shouting them commands down. You know what I'm saying? And he was hitting them so hard that they was like, look, uh, Moses, you going up there and out of him. Like, we could. You know what I'm saying? The Exodus 20. Matter of fact, read some of that. Read Exodus 20, 
Read Exodus 20, uh, right after the Ten Commandments. Exodus 18. 20 and 18. Yeah, yeah. Now, this all was happening. He just yelled down the commandments. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and they can read the commandments on their own time. You know what I'm saying? But just to paint a picture, it wasn't like the Most High was like, I am the Lord your God. Have no other gods before. Nah. nah, nah. Most High, the whole mountain was on fire. The earth was shaking. Trumpets were blowing. You see what I'm saying? And that's the condition in which we received that fiery law. Beautiful <laughs> situation. Go ahead, though. What did it say? To Exodus 20 and 18. Yeah. And all the people saw the thundering and Ooh. the lightning uh -huh. and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoke. And when <laughs> the people saw it, they removed and stood it far off. You see that? You see trumpet, mountain smoking, fire, trumpets blowing. That's the condition that the. So with this same thing, with the trumpet, does it mean he's coming or he's there? Yeah, his presence is there. It did. But notice there ain't no flutes going off. I'm just saying, why is it a trumpet? Oh, because trumpets, trumpets let you know that not just be it being loud, but war is impending, or the most I need your attention. You know what I'm saying? And even uh, when you get into the uh, return of the most high, the return of the Messiah, should I say, it's trumpets blowing. You feel me? You're getting the revelations. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm they, uh, yeah, seven trumps got to blow. You see what I'm saying? And the trumps, and you see see the law, trumps was blowing, mountains was on fire, earth was quaking. That's how we received the law. You know what I'm saying? That's powerful. But it also scared our people. Go ahead, what did it say? Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. Mm -hmm. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Lest we what? Die. You see that? Mm -hmm. So in other words, we asked for a mediator. We asked that was our petition. We said, look, Moses, that's too scary for me. You know what I'm saying? You go holler at him, whatever he tell you, you tell us and we'll listen. See? So we asked for somebody to be in between us and the most high. Ah. Ah. Go ahead. They knew they heard the voice of the most high. They would die. So when you hear certain brothers coming off too rough and people like, I can't listen to that. They're not ready to serve the most high. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Our people thought they was going to die hearing all that. Like, Moses, you go holler at him. You tripping because the brother done raised his voice a little bit. You see what I'm saying? Our people ain't ready, man. We too soft. We been spoiled here, man. Think of it like, how you gonna say that about a brother that come off bold in the word, strong in the word, you know what I'm saying? But you ain't never read how we received the law? That wasn't soft. Go ahead, what it say? And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, mm -hmm. and that his spirit may be before your faces, that you fear not. Mm. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. The thick what? Darkness. Wow. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Mm. Ye shall not make make with me gods of silver, mm. neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Going into idols and all that. You know what I'm saying? I dropped it. So, but that's Christ talking and everything in the right? Yeah. Whenever you hear about the Most High speaking, it's Christ. It, I know. Okay. So, why would you tell him? What? People hadn't seen him? What you mean? Like, okay, never mind. Nah, say it. Hmm? Because he's saying, like, he's seen them, so what he thinks he's going to make a, a idol out of him? Yeah, because people. Cause that's that, people. Well, yeah, that's that. And look, remember, they had just came out of Egypt. And these men had over 360 gods. You feel me? That's what the Egyptians did. They made gods. So, you know, that's one of the laws he let them be known if you go back up in Exodus 20. One of the laws is don't make any graven images. You know what I'm saying? And one one of the things we did, if we ever got to that numbers, one of the things we did was make a golden calf. Numbers the thirty second chapter or Exodus the thirty second chapter. We made a, a golden calf. As soon as Moses was gone for like forty days, we was like, oh no, he done left us. Let's make a golden calf. He just told you don't do it. 
You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the nations do. Our God actually is a spirit. You know what I'm saying? We must worship him in spirit and in truth. We're not supposed to be lusting to do what the other nations do. Like, they'll make a God, a man made him, a blacksmith or whatever, and then they bow, they, they kneecap, get their kneecap dusty, bow to that God that they made. But how are you bowing to something that you made? We were made by the creator of heaven and earth. We bow to him and him on. You feel me? And one of his things is don't make no graven or carved images of me. You know what I'm saying? That's a violation. Whether it's black or white. You ain't gonna be making no graven images of the most high. His son, angels, none of that. You feel me? Alright, so look, go to Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33, I believe it's uh, one, one and two. Yeah, read one to four. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32, 33, one to four. And this is the blessing for which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Mm -hmm. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from the seer mm -hmm. unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran. Yep. He came with ten thousands of saints. Ten thousands who? Of saints. Come on. From his right hand went a fiery, 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 <laughs> fiery law. Not court. trip, not trip off that. So we we get another angle into what was there. You see what I'm saying? He telling you like it was thousands of saints with him when he was shouting this. Though, like so, the Messiah wasn't alone. You see what I'm saying? Like when he was shouting that law down. Via what his father gave him, he showed up with a hoax, a heavenly hoax. You see him in here as 10,000 of saints. So this ain't the same thing that works for him as for the 10,000? Nah. Totally nah, different. it's totally different. It's just like in Jude, when it say the most. Matter of fact, go to the last book before Revelation. We'll come back here. Jude. There's only one chapter, verse 14. Yeah. And Enoch also, the seventh, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Same thing we reading right here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, what else? Okay. Yeah. To execute judgment, judgment upon all, mm. and to prevent all that they are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. Mm. Which they have ungodly committed, mm. and all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. See, so the, mo the Lord is coming, the Messiah is coming with ten thousands of his saints, just like he showed up at Mount Sinai. You feel me? Thousands of saints issuing a fiery law. Give me one more before we go back there. Psalm 68 17. Psalm 68 17. We see, we we paint the picture of all that went down at the mountain when we see the law. You feel me? We know trumpets was blowing, mountains was smoking, earth was quaking, Most High was shouting down commandments, and I, it, was, it was so loud and horrible that our people was like Moses, you go high with him. All right. Now we see when we got the fiery law. It was a fiery law, right? And it was thousands of saints or heavenly hosts with him. Uh, Psalm 68, 17. What else was there? The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Even who? Thousands of angels. Go ahead. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, Ooh, in the holy place. Just like in Sinai. You see that? Mm -hmm. So he put the number on them thousands right there. So that lets you know chariots. You know what I'm saying? Angels move around in chariots. Heavenly chariots. You know them as UFOs today. I'm saying unidentified flying objects, they try to call them. You know what I'm saying? They identify with us because in the scripture, they call them chariots of the most high. You feel me? So now we get a, uh, he painting the picture of what went down at the mountain. We got the law. Again, trumpets was blowing, mountains was smoking, earth was quaking. It was a fiery law. All right? The Lord was there with thousands of his saints, heavenly hosts, and it was chariots there. You see, 
They don't paint that picture for us when we talk about Pentecost. You just hear about the fiery tongue, but the fiery tongues, fiery law. You feel me? And it was evidence that the power was with the disciples, and that's when they kicked off that book of Acts. And start, you know, miracles popping, spreading the truth about the Messiah. That's why it's hot. Yeah, actually, it's a short version. It's actually called Actions of the Apostles. So it's short for the book of Acts. All right, we're back to Deuteronomy 33. Read that through on down to four. And we're going to get all the way up until. Yes, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hands. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy word. Moses commanded us the law, mm -hmm. even the inheritance of the congregation of Israel. No doubt. Let's do uh, Leviticus 23 so we can read about the seven complete Sabbaths. Okay. Yeah, Leviticus 23 real quick. We need to read about the seven complete Sabbaths following Passover. What's the, what's the extra day mean? Uh, that's the 50th day. So you Why got. Is it extra day? Uh, it's, it's a law called Jubilees, uh, which is which is groups of 50 in the Bible. So it's a mini jubilee. Every 50 years, every Israelite, even if he fell on hard times and he had to hire himself out to his brother as a servant, not a slave, but as a servant, if you fell on hard times, after 50 years, you would be let go and, and, and uh, let, let free and go back to your rightful land of inheritance, your plot of inheritance that was given to your father. Sometimes people were foolish with their money and fell on hard times. And he would have to hire himself out and work for another Israelite. You feel me? And you have to do that for, for about 50 years. Yeah. But your children and your grandchildren, after that 50 years was up, would go back to your inheritance. You feel me? Yeah, they, yeah, they still be set. You know what I'm saying? And it's called the year of release. Jubilee. All right? Uh, when the Messiah returns, it's supposed to be a jubilee mm -hmm. for for, our, for his children, us. We get to go back home to our rightful plot of inheritance. You know what I'm saying? Like the slaves get released from their hard work and they're going back to what's rightfully theirs. Mm -hmm. So, the Feast of Weeks of Pentecost, Pente, cost actually means count 50. Count 50. So it's roughly 50 days after Passover. It's seven complete Sabbaths, which is 49 days. And then the following day, which is the 50th day. We're going to read in the law. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Uh, bing, bing, bing. Start at 15. We're going to read 15 through, uh, 15 through 21. Read 15. You can read 15 through 17. This is the count. This is how we get the count. Now, if you go to April the 11th, you need to do it on your smartphone, whatever you put your calendar up. On your smartphone. Let me see. Let me put my calendar up. Show you the count. Nah, that's my calculator. Calendar. I don't know I got a count. I heard it right in my face. <laughs> I'd be tripping, man. Alright. So, if you go back to April the 11th, that was Passover. Alright. So, that was a Tuesday. The Sabbath was the 15th. Was the 15th. Now, we had to have seven complete Sabbaths. You can have no half weeks or none of that. So our count started on the 15th. Okay, the next Sabbath after that is the 22nd. That's one. The Sabbath after that is the 29th. That's two. The Sabbath after that is May the 6th. Three. The Sabbath after that is May 13th. Four. The Sabbath after that is May 20th. Five. The Sabbath after that is May the 27th. Six. Sabbath after that 
is June 3rd, 7 plus one day, June the 4th. You feel me? You can do that easy on your you know what I'm smartphone, pull a calendar out, bing, 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 bing. That's also how we know that the new moon can't dictate the Sabbath. Because if you were doing new moons in between these months, you would have to reset your Sabbath day to where you would get seven complete Sabbaths. Like I'm going to read right here. You got to get 50 days. Seven complete Sabbaths following Passover. You understand? Mm-hmm. Makes sense? All right, let's read. Leviticus 23 and 15. What does it say? And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, mm-hmm. from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave off. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And we know a Sabbath is the seventh day. Well, that means you got seven full weeks got to go by to you. Feel me? If you get down to the end of a month and you say you switching Sabbaths from, from Wednesday to Tuesday, then you, you it wasn't seven days in between them Sabbaths. You see what I'm saying? It got to be seven complete Sabbaths. That's why I say complete on there. Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead. Even after the morrow, after the seven Sabbaths, mm-hmm. shall ye number 50 days. Oh, number what? 50 days. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall offer a new meat offering. And we're going to be out there grilling, doing our thing, enjoying short leggers going to be running around. You feel me? But the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is day 50. You see? So everything we're doing is in accordance to the scripture. Now, you got a, uh, a whole bunch of religious Negroes call themselves Pentecostal. That's a feast day, though. <laughs> How you name yourself after a feast day? That's like me saying, I'm, I'm Passover. I'm a Passover in. I'm a you know what I'm saying? I'm a piece of dedication. I'm a piece of tabernacle. I'm a tabernacle. I'm an atonement. I'm a trumpet. They basically saying I'm 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 feast of weeks. It don't even make sense. You see what I'm saying? They're naming themselves after one of the most highest feast days. Don't make any sense. But you see seven complete Sabbaths, right? And the moral after the seventh Sabbath is day fifty, right? Let's jump into the Acts the second chapter. Let's get into it. This is where all the so-called Pentecostal Negroes, they claim they speak in tongues. This is where they go. Acts. Acts the second chapter. They only read the verses 1 through 4. They do not read all the way down to verse 11. There's some uh, passages in the book of Enoch, too, that go in about these fiery tongues. Acts. Yeah, New Testament, right after... Uh, it's right after the, uh, okay, the John, Gospel of John. Right after the Gospel of John. Before the Book of Romans and all that. Acts chapter 2. We're going to go 1 through 11. 1 through 11. Now look, the Pentecostal doctrine is going to stop you at verse 4. And tell you they got the Holy Spirit because they speak it in tongues. I should have bought a Honda, Honda. John Claude Van Damme, Van Damme, Van Damme, cheese its cheese its You know what I'm saying? Which is all utter madness. We get us in 1 Corinthians 14 to get some understanding on that as well. The book of tongues. Yeah, ain't none of that. that is. They either, it's either some good acting or demonic possession. You know what I'm saying? The tongues is just you giving the gift to speak the gospel in another language. That's it. Some of us speak the Hebrew tongue. You know what I'm saying? Some of us can speak Hebrew. Some of us can read and write Hebrew. That's a tongue. You, most of us speak the English tongue. That's a tongue. It's an established language. You feel me? And if you don't know what you're saying, you're supposed to shut up. You dig? Uh, if there's no interpreter there, especially if you're speaking out in the assembly, if there ain't no interpreter there, you got to be quiet according to the script. Between me and God, you know what I'm yeah, you keep that to yourself, dude. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be speaking that to yourself in your closets and that word. Not out in front of nobody showing off. That's what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? That's what they're doing. Even the donkey in the Old Testament that talks spoke as a what? A man. What the hell is wrong with these people? They coming up with, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, John Claus Van Damme. I should have bought a Honda. This nigga want a Honda. Accord. <laughs> That's what's going on. 
It's magic. But Acts the second chapter. Let's get into it. Yeah, 1 through 11. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Pentecost is the Feast of Weeks. Pentecost means count 50. Mm -hmm. Seven complete Sabbaths. That's why it's called the Feast of Weeks or Kav Shabuah or Shabuot. That's the Hebrew phrase for it. Kav, Feast, Shabuot, Weeks. All right? Makes sense? Let's go. And suddenly there came a sound from as of a rushing mighty wind, mm -hmm. and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Yeah, so this is power. This ain't nothing that was, you know, that happened on a small scale. This was major. You feel me? And th think about it. You're dealing with the Holy Spirit, the power of the Most High. Why wouldn't it be, you know what I'm saying, something that shaped people to the core? Why would, like we read about when they received the law, they got scared, like, dang. You see what I'm saying? They People today think the Holy Spirit is something soft, weak. You know what I'm saying? But every time it came over men in the Bible, he had miracles was popping off or mighty works was popping off. You know what I'm saying? What else was that? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Like as a fire. Now that's major because we received a fiery law. If it's 50 days after Passover, that means this is the Feast of Weeks. All right? When we read in Exodus 19, that's when we received the third month. We was at Mount Sinai. We received the law. When other spots that showed it was a fiery law, when the Exodus 20 and 18, it showed how the mount was on fire, the earth was quaking, trumpets was blowing. We went to, uh, what's that, Psalm 68 17. It talked about. Man yeah. 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 Which, which which is 50 days after we departed from Egypt. Passover is our departure from bondage. Third month, we get to the mount. You feel me? But this is roughly 50 days after the Messiah was crucified. Hmm. So why do we have to wait 50 days to get the law? 50, that, that's, that was they, they was they track from Egypt to the mount. That's where he was giving the law at, the mount. And even when you get into, uh, if you look at some of the uh, secrets of Mount Sinai on YouTube, and they show you the real Mount Sinai, the whole top of the mountain range to this day is blacker than sackcloth. Yeah. 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 It's blacker than sackcloth. We gave pictures out, you know what I'm saying, a couple years ago. Show folks like, man, this thing is real. Yeah, this thing real. The whole top of the mountain is black. You feel me? The rest of the mountain don't even look like that. But it show it tell you in one of them scriptures the most I descended or the Lord descended on that mountain in a smoke. We just read. The whole mountain was on fire. We just read. So it would make sense that the whole top of the whole mountain range was black to this day. You feel me? Because it was burnt. Uh, you feel me? So we see that the disciples ain't starting a new religious movement here. You feel me? They keeping the commands of their, what they've been doing their whole life. They keep in the Feast of Weeks. But being this a fiery law that was issued, thousands of the Most High fiery law, he came with thousands of his saints. It was 20,000 chariots. You know what I'm saying? Trumpets was blowing. Earth was quaking. Mountain was on fire. That's how I received the law. So you got a fiery law from fiery tongues. Huh? Fiery gospel now. And it say this word burn up his enemy. Uh, you see the correlation? She got all. All right, come on, let's get it. Mm -hmm. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Come on. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Look, Jerusalem. they stopped there. I was just showing you the Pentecostal doctrine. Mm -hmm. They said right there, they stopped, shut the book. They dare not keep reading. <laughs> they dare not keep reading because it exposes that horse and pony show. All right, go ahead. And they were, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. Uh huh. The, the boat, the boat, the boat, uh -huh. the boat men out of every nation under heaven. Yeah, because we were scattered. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers weren't living in Jerusalem, but we would come back to Jerusalem for the feast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now. 
if we scatter into other nations and, and lands, we speak those tongues as well. You know what I'm saying? Hebrew might have been a tongue on down the line that we were speaking, but the brothers that's coming back to Jerusalem for the feast, they know the language. They know the language of the lands they're living in. You feel me? You had children, grandchildren born in different parts of the world to where they speak the, the tongues of where they born at. All right. But they back at Jerusalem for the feast. And, and they devout because they keep the laws of the most high. But they don't know the they don't they uh yeah, not necessarily they don't know the Hebrew language. The the, the miracle is about to be hold on. I heard the wonderful works of the most high spoken in the Greek tongue, the Asian tongue, the African tongue. You feel me? This is why the Bible was printed in every language. This is where it started at. No, out of every nation under heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, when this was noise abroad, yeah, the multitude came together and were confounded. And were what? And let you know this is major right here. They confounded. Why everybody confounded? I thought it was some soft that happened. Now, when they heard. That these disciples have followed the Messiah, but they're speaking the gospel or the good news in all these different languages. The multitude that's current is like they amazed, they confounded, like what is going on? All right, go ahead. What else is that? Because that every man heard them speaking his own language. There he is. All they so have to do is interpret the right yeah. word. Yeah, all they have to do is read on down to verse six in the Pentecostal doctrine. Every man heard them speak in their own language. So the tongue is a language. It ain't, I should have bought a Honda, 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 Jean Claude Van Damme. You feel me? It's, a, it's an established language. Go ahead, love. Yeah, read on down to the left. And they were all amazed and marveled, mm -hmm. saying one to another, Behold, are not all these your speech? Uh, Gal Galileans. Galileans, because he's uh, they followed Yahweh of Nazareth. Ministry was in Galilee. You feel me? So they like look. All these are disciples of of the, the one that was crucified fifty days earlier. Ain't all these Galileans? You feel me? And the Galileans speak Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? That was the language of our people. Oh, no, ain't all these Galileans? Go ahead. And how? And how here? Every man in our own tongue, mm -hmm. where we were born. Come on, Parthians mm -hmm. and what? Medes, 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 Medes. Mm -hmm. and Elamites, Elamites, Elamites. Yeah. Uh -huh. and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, yeah, and in Judea, uh -huh. in uh, Cappadocia, Cap Cappadocia, Cappadocia. Uh -huh. Cappadocia. Uh -huh. In Pontus, uh -huh. in Asia. Uh, Phrygia. <laughs> Phrygia. Phrygia. Mm -hmm. And Pamphylia. 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 Uh -huh. And Egypt. Yeah. And in the parts of Libya. Come on, that's Africa. That's North Africa right there. About Cyrene. Uh huh. And strangers of Rome. Uh huh. Jews. And proselytes. Proselytes, yeah. Cretes mm -hmm. and Arabians. Uh huh. We do hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. Trip off there, right there. In our tongues, the wonderful works of the Most High. And this is giving you a glimpse at where all the Israelites were scattered at. Mm -hmm. It was all over the place. From North Africa to Asia to certain parts of Europe. You feel me? Even say Judea in there. Judea. So these was only the Jews. Yeah. Nobody else. So what they all went there, right? Yeah, the Jews. Okay, so it was, about men went there, yeah, right? Yeah, Israelites coming out of every nation back to Jerusalem to keep the feast. Did any other nations come? What, up to the feast? At, at that time? No. It's only, the Jews. it's only the Israelites. That's what it was saying. Oh, Jews, devout men out of every nation. You got uh, them saying Jews and proselytes, but you got brothers that had lost their identity that were being taught that they was Israelites. They were basically being converted back into the truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even the Messiah, uh, uh, they said not, not the Messiah, but in the book of Acts, the third chapter. They told that high priest and them and the, and the scribes and the Pharisees 
that they need to be converted. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to change your mind and your ways. So even though a proselyte is a taught one out of another nation, you dig? These are actually Israelites who had lost their way of mind, their way of thinking, who they were. You know what I'm saying? They had to be retaught who they were. And they coming back up to the feast, of, back up to Jerusalem for the feast, to keep the feast. You know what I'm saying? This And I, the reason I say that is because this is before the calling of Cornelius. Cornelius was the Gentile that got called, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he had to send for an Israelite to get proper understanding. Peter, that's in Acts the 10th chapter. This is before him. So, you see what I'm saying? This is before the calling of Cornelius. That's how we know these Israelites out of every nation. You know what I'm saying? Whether they uh, were, were Israelites that knew who they were their whole life, or Israelites that had to be woke up like us and had to be retaught the commands and all that of the Most High, we'd be considered proselytes as well. You know what I'm saying? Or converts had to be converted from a Gentile way of thinking back into our fold, our natural way of thinking. But we see that the tongue fiery tongues had nothing to do with you uttering stuff that you don't know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Uh, these well, people... A lot of people say it's their connection with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't gotta know what I'm saying. I don't nobody or the, the crowd don't know what you're saying. Well, there ain't no interpreter there. You know what I'm saying? That's, so the whole point was him speaking the law. You know, they want to speaking the good news. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, speaking the good news of the coming kingdom. You feel me? The gospel. Feel me in all languages. Why? Because Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth. You know what I'm saying? So they have they would have to hear the good news in the language in which they were born in. So nothing to do with your connection with him or no, not with the not with the saying you you just talking, you know what you're saying. No, ain't nothing to do with what the church say it is. Nothing. You need to get that out your mind. You know what I'm saying? The Pentecostal doctrine was started by, I believe, Jack Parhan or something like that. Mm -hmm. Jack Parhan, I believe his name was, in 1830 something. It's a, it's a new doctrine in the earth called the Pentecostal doctrine. So they started the whole speaking in tongues? Yeah, as you know today. So why do the Christians do it? It's the same thing. The same thing. Yeah, the Pentecostal, they, they, they Sunday church goers, they Christians, you know what I'm saying? So called Christians, whatever. But that doctrine was started by a white man in the 1800s. It ain't got nothing to do with what we just read right here. Or they said we hear the wonderful works of the Most High spoken in our in, in, in the language in which we were born. Okay, we, I was born in Cyrene, Libya. Whatever language they speak, I can understand they talking about the Messiah who was crucified 50 days earlier. I was born in Rome. Rome speak Italian. You know what I'm saying? Romans speak Italian. I can hear, dang, okay, they speaking about this. The whole point was for those who didn't believe in the Messiah, you understand, to hear the good news of them and say, look, I'm trying to get down with y'all. That's the whole point. You see what I'm saying? And not everybody believed, but it was a witness against them. Like, look, you heard that what's being said over there, right? You know what I'm saying? And as you keep reading, they going to think that Peter them drunk. Look, these niggas drunk. He's like, look, it's only the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. We ain't drunk. You see what I'm saying? So the whole thing was about the miracle was that they were being, they never even spoke those languages before. You feel me? But they now had the ability to spread the good news of the Son of the Most High. You did and speak to somebody in their own language. You know what I'm saying? The wonderful works of the Most High. That's the miracle. That's what that's about. I ain't got nothing to do with what I should have bought a Honda. But it's another Songs, right? Yeah, First Corinthians 14. Let's go to the next. Okay, let's go to First Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14. Yeah, First Corinthians 14. We're gonna read. We're gonna get into that. Let's read one through uh, one through twenty-two. Um, <laughs> 1 through 25. Yeah. Oh, okay. 1 Corinthians 14 chapter 1 through 25. That's a, I mean, that's a good one because this is a chapter that all the Pentecostals stay away from. They don't never go in this 1 Corinthians 14 
because it kills that doctrine. Remember, the tongues were given so they could speak the wonderful works of the Most High, the gospel, the good news about the Son of the Most High in all languages. That's the miracle. Never had spoke them languages before, but the Most High gave them utterance. The Spirit gave them utterance to speak. And that the whole point that it's not the tongue speaking they're doing today is because the people that heard them uttering or speaking knew what they were saying. Like, dang, I heard y'all heard that? You hear that. You see what I'm saying? And that was the beginning of the Bible being uh, translated into all languages. Right there. Right there. It started 2,000 years ago. On the Feast of Weeks, in which we about to celebrate on June the 4th. Make sense? Yeah. I should have bought a Honda, though. <laughs> John Claude Van Damme. Van Damme. First Corinthians, the 14th chapter. So I one. Follow after charity mm -hmm. and desire and desire spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. but rather that ye may prophesy. But rather you may what? Prophesy. Yeah, prophesy. That you may talk about the coming kingdom. That's what prophesying is. You feel me? Because it's prophecy about what's coming. So, yeah, you want spiritual gifts, you know, follow after charity. That's always good. Alms giving, you know what I'm saying? Helping those less fortunate. Desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Because anybody that believes in the Messiah, that's the gift they get right out the gate. The spirit of the, Mo the, spirit of the Messiah is the spirit of prophecy. That's Revelation 19 and 10. In fact, grab it real quick. We come right back to Revelation. Re Revelation 19 and 10. We'll come right back to where you at. Right 19 and 10. Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Be thou, do it not. This is an angel. And let you know the angels are not little white babies and huggies, you know what I'm saying, flying around, the angels are angelic powers, like, if you were to see one, you lose strength, you get scared and fall out, <laughs> man, your mom, every time an angel showed up, mm -hmm. most of the times in the scripture, men got scared and lost their strength and fell out, yeah, got on them knees, and a lot of them was like, if they, if they weren't, you know, on that level, they'll tell you, get up, I'm your brother. I'm just here for a message. I got you. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that they got scared, they had to come tell you, look, fear not. Why you tell them to fear not? Because he's scared. Why is he scared? Because you don't look like you from around her. You feel me? That's a messenger of the most high. That's not no little white baby flying around with a pamper on. Like Cupid, yeah, Cupid. The damn white Roman that strike you with the love arrow and all that bull. Yeah, go ahead. What it say? Like? I am thy fellow servant, mm -hmm. and of thy brethren yeah. that have the testimony of, of Jesus. Yeah, I was shocked. Go ahead. First of God. Uh -huh. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See that? The testimony of the Messiah. He is the spirit of prophecy. That's what you get right out the gate. You got the testimony of the Messiah. Everybody got that testimony to get the spirit of prophecy. Because you can talk about his coming kingdom, which is prophesying. You see what I'm saying? Going back to 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, mm -hmm. but unto God. Mm -hmm. For no man understandeth him. If I said Barak Athav Yahweh, you know what I'm saying? I said Bereshit Barak. Elohim et Hashemayim wa et Haaretz. It's an unknown tongue. Right? I will be speaking to the Most High, not to you, because you don't know what I just said. I just said in Hebrew, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You see? So, whenever somebody try to pull that madness, I'll speak of the Hebrew real quick to them. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, Damn, I don't even know exactly. Most I know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? But you don't. But they'll put that same thing Jesus said. Exactly. Until we keep reading. That's the whole point. <laughs> Make them keep reading. You know what I'm saying? But look, I can interpret what I just said. 
They can't. That's another difference. Go ahead. How did in the spirit he speak his mystery? Mm -hmm. But he that prophesied speaking unto men for edification. You see, if you prophesy, you speaking to men for their teaching, their edification. Like, look, you see that blood moon? You see that mark of the beast? You see what's happening with them G20 summits? You see what's happening with Donald Trump and him going over to Jerusalem and then going to meet with the Pope? And, you feel me? You see what's happening with North Korea? You see what's happening with the bombs they dropping? You see... You know what I'm saying? You prophesying because all these are signs of the impending return by the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You see? So that would edify somebody more than I'd say uh, any of it. Wherever she would rather he met, I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Barack Obama, if you don't understand it, then you wouldn't edify it. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Go ahead. With exhortation and comfort. That speaketh in an unknown tongue, edifieth himself. Yeah, a Saudi Rockley Mordin. You don't know what I just said. You know what I'm saying? He made the moon for feast. He made the moon for feast. Go ahead. But he that prophesied, prophesied, edifies the church. Yeah, he edified the congregation, the assembly. Like, man, y'all see them signs what's going on? Y'all see them blood moons? A couple years ago, some blood moons popping off, and they all popped off on the feast day. Clear signs from the Mosai, or clear sickness from the Mosai. We better get ourselves together. You see what I'm saying? How are their blood moons? And you talk about the moon turning into blood in the scripture, and they all happen to fall on his appointed feast. That was like two years in a row. They was popping off. And Rose was like, whoa. Uh, but see, that's edification because we can prophesy like, look, read this about the blood moon. You see that? They can get somebody straight. Like, oh man, I'm tripping. I mean, yeah, get yourself together. Mm -hmm. Man didn't make that up. Man didn't get up there with no uh, red sharpie marker and color that moon. That moon is red. All right, go ahead. Uh, verse five. How will they all speak with or rather that you prophesy. Mm -hmm. For great is he that prophesies than he that speaketh the tongue. Now you got the Pentecostal doctrine that you ain't got the Holy Spirit unless you speak in tongue. Mm -hmm. But that just, that just said greater is he that prophesies mm -hmm. than he that speaks the tongue. You greater if you prophesy. Because prophesying edifies who you're talking to. Other than that, I can speak in an unknown tongue and you don't have no understanding. But if I interpret it for you, then you go, oh, okay, that's what he said. All right, go ahead. Except he interprets, uh -huh. that the church may receive edifying. Mm -hmm. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I prophesy? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation, mm -hmm. or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine. Yeah, there's no prophet. You know what I'm saying? If I come speaking unto you in an unknown tongue. Other than me interpreting to you what I said. Other than that, nobody's being edified. So it's pointless. Ain't we all coming together to get understanding? Mm -hmm. All right, so if we ain't here to get understanding, with all your getting, get understanding, Proverbs 4 and 7. If we ain't here to get understanding, we done wasted our time. Nigga, you showing off up in here. <laughs> Trying to seem like you deep or something. <laughs> That's for anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You showing off. You feel me? If it ain't to edify the body, the gift you got, if it's not to edify the body, you showing off. Some people, why do people say that it's like it's only between me and God? So you think it's supposed to be for the whole assembly? Yeah, if you if you speaking it out loud, you ain't talking about what you do in your own closet at home. That's, oh you know, yeah, that's between you and, your, and the most high. Ain't nobody else around. You feel me? But if you uh, got the nerve to come up in somewhere and... <clears throat> And, you know, and get to uttering some things, and, and, be, and you know and everybody going to be looking at you like, dang, the spirit must be on her. What is she saying? You only doing that to show off. You know what I'm saying? Or it's demon possession. Either one. Why do we say that? It can't be found in the script. You throw it up. <laughs> you got to speak in it, you know, you got to yeah, that was demon possession. Talking white shit. Like, yeah. 
I seen it. I seen the most I choke a nigga roll out of Passover before. The night before he was blaspheming. Try to say, well, our belief is the same as voodoo. Man, the most I choke that nigga bro out at Passover. I told brother him he shouldn't even be allowed up in this deal. You know what I'm saying? He had already got his ticket, man. Get that nigga's money back. You know what I'm saying? Like, he shouldn't even be allowed to come through across the threshold. He decided to come anyway, man. Got up and said, the most I choked him out in front of everybody. The most I ain't having that wickedness. You feel me? And we ain't heard from him since. Like, he's circling the drain somewhere. I'm a Haitian nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was raised in voodoo, some madness, voodoo, some madness like that. Got choked out, though. But that's what I'm saying. That's a, that's a, uh, it's either de- demon possession or some good act. Flat out. Go ahead. What else to say? And even things without life given things. Whether a pipe or a horse. Except they give a distinction in the sound. How shall it be known what is pipe or horse? You understand? Even things without life, like a trumpet, like a flute. The trumpet gives a different sound than a flute, than a clarinet, than a saxophone. If there's no distinction in sound, you won't know what's being played. All right, go ahead. For the trumpet give an uncertain sound, mm-hmm. who should prepare himself to the, to the battle? Because one thing, one of the functions of a trumpet is to gather everybody for war. So if you ride out there with a, a flute, ain't nobody going to be looking like, what is that? <laughs> exactly. Go ahead. So likewise, ye accept ye utter by the tongue word to be understood. Mm-hmm. How shall it be known what is spoken? How shall it be known what is spoken? Makes sense, don't it? You see, everything out of most I get down, everything's ordered. You understand? He ain't leaving us out there. Some Negro walking in there speaking an unknown tongue. Even when we break down and go through some Hebrew in class, and we break it down. Like, y'all know how to say that? That's how you spell it out in Hebrew. The numerical value to it. You know what I'm saying? This what it means. You see? So everybody can get edified. How you saying amen or shalom or shalom or whatever you saying, but you don't know the meaning of it. You can't speak nothing. You don't know the meaning of it. You're wasting your time. You see? Go ahead. What else to say? For ye shall speak into the air. Mm. Okay. I'm going to right now. All the time. Sure. You said about the uh, Trump, right? Mm. Uh, you know, y'all song, you talk about the... Uh, the watch, are the watchmen gonna be blowing the trumpet? The what? The watchmen. When you see, uh, go to Isaiah fifty-eight one. You feel what I'm saying? Like the scripture I for it. Isaiah fifty-eight. That's the Old Testament. But uh, a form of us blowing the trumpet is us warning the wicked of what's coming. So Isaiah fifty-eight. What's that? Uh, cry loud. Yeah, cry loud, spread not. Lift up your voice like a flute. Uh, <laughs> uh, you said Isaiah fifty-eight one. With the, the voice like a flute, spare not. So, whenever we raise up our voices and warn the wicked of the impending judgment that's coming, that's us blowing the trumpet. What we used to have in Israel was watchmen. You feel me? Everybody had a watch. They'd be on the, be watching out, watching the walls, the outer gates of Jerusalem, three, four hours. She be all right. Go ahead. Isaiah 58 1. Cry loud, for not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Yeah. The house of Jacob is in. There we go. That's what I'm saying. Like, so the watchman has nothing to do with the trumpet. Yeah, I'm just giving you a historical background. When we in one nation in our land, so the actual watchman, that was their job, was to watch the walls of Jerusalem at night mm-hmm. and during the day. You know what I'm saying? Type of danger would come that would be blowing the trumpet to warn the people that it was coming. You want to go ahead and grab them? Go ahead and grab them. Then we can finish out the first Corinthians 14 and then we'll we'll call it. We can get into, you know what I'm saying, some other topics. She and her smiling. Daddy, baby. But okay, so that's the question that I'm going to get. So when you come back, it's gonna be the watchman again. That's going on. We the watchman. 
Yeah, but you're going to have angels blowing trumpets, but it ain't, it's more like certain events are happening and you know trumpets are blowing. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be events happening. That's what in the revelations it goes to this trumpet blow and this happening. Mm -hmm. So it's more of us looking out for the events that's happening, knowing that trumpets are blowing. Even if you don't hear a physical trumpet mm -hmm. blowing, you know what I'm saying? Or a sound from the heavens coming or whatever. Which, you, it, which possibly that could happen though. I'm just saying, even if you don't hear nothing in the heavens, but you see in certain things happening, based off what we read, then you'll know, hey, second Trump, third Trump. Me and bro was talking the other day, it's crazy that this president we have is called Donald Trump. He dropping bombs all over, <laughs> all over the place, you know what I'm saying? We're going to finish this first Corinthians 14 off. Little baby. Little baby. Yeah, whatever. Alright, what verse what verse you in? Uh I can mm -hmm. There are, it may be, so many high forces in the world, mm -hmm. and none of them is about significant See, signification. None of them. They all the different sounds and voices in the world, they all have their own sound. All of them. Alright, go ahead. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be after him that speaketh of a, a barbarian. Wow. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Yeah, go ahead. Even so, he, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. And what edifies? We read it already. Okay. What edifies? He said, "You zealous of spiritual gifts? You want spiritual powers and gifts?" That the Holy Spirit give out. But it says, seek that you may edify the church. And what edifies? Oh, you, you read it early. Uh, Back to verse 3. But he that what? But he that. He that prophesied speaketh unto men to what? There we go. So we say, seek that you may edify the church. What edifies? Prophesying. Uh -huh. Not speaking in an unknown tongue. Unless there is some type of interpreter there. Now we see up in them churches, them whole houses called churches. Ain't no interpreter. Ain't no interpreter there. There's never no interpreter saying he just said this. Hell, the people that speaking don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, don't, they can't even tell you I just said this. I saw your rock and more Dean. He made the moon for feast. They don't even tell you. They say, I should have bought a Honda. You be like, they want a Honda. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Nah? John Claude Van Damme. That's an actor. Yeah, you mean John Claude Van Damme. All right, go ahead. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, hold on. Well, hold on. What you mean you ain't got to know what you're saying? He just said, if you speak in an unknown tongue, pray that you may that you have understanding and you can interpret that. Go ahead. What else you say? If I, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unspeakable. Come on. If you can't interpret, then guess what that means? Your spirit prayer, but you don't even understand what you're saying. And are we here to be unfruitful? No, if you ain't bearing no fruit, you're worthless. Come on. 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. That's right. Come on. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Flat out. All understanding. Come on. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit. How shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen? Amen. Right. Seeing he understand it not without saying. Yeah, amen. Amen. It means it means uh, so be it. Or well, I agree, but on a deeper level, it's Hebrew for faith, mm -hmm. meaning I believe what you're saying. But you don't know what they're saying. So how can you believe it? Or how could you say so be it? Or I or agree? You feel me? 
makes no sense. Go ahead. For thou verily thank me, but the other is not edified. Mm. I thank my God. More than you all. This is the this is the uh the apostle and prophet Shaul, mm -hmm. Paul. You feel me? Paul was more he was bilingual. More than bilingual, he spake more than two languages. Mm -hmm. uh, an example is Acts twenty one thirty seven on down, where he spoke and the dude was jacked up. He could speak Greek, and then the very next chapter he started speaking Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Matter of fact, let's go there real quick for the for the, for the audience. Say Acts twenty one. Acts 21, 37, down to Acts 22, like verse 1. Acts 21, 37, and we're just going to read on down to chapter 22. It's at the end of 21, end of 22. Acts 21, verse 37. That's show, that show what Shaul meant when he said, I speak with tongues more than you all. I should have bought a Honda. And as Paul was led unto the castle, yeah. he said unto the chief captain, Now speak unto thee. Uh -huh. Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? It blew his mind. You can speak Greek? Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian? Hold on. Paul was mistaken for it. He can speak Greek, but was mistaken for an Egyptian. Like, how you know how to speak Greek? Ain't you an Egyptian? Showing you that Paul was what kind of man? was a man of color because the Egyptians are dark. Even if you looked at the, the, the Arabs is over there today and which them wasn't them then. You feel me? Muhammad and them hadn't even invaded then. So, I see a lot of dark people. Yeah, you, you still see. I'm saying the Egyptians in the ancient world were much darker than they even now. You feel me? So for Paul to be mistaken for an Egyptian, let you know that Paul was not no white boy. Yeah, he was a dark skinned brother. Just like Moses. Moses passed for an Egyptian. Messiah went and hid Egypt. Joseph passed for an Egyptian in the uh, book of Genesis. Showing you that the Hebrew Israelites have this have a brown complexion, melanin complexion, just like the Egyptians, Ethiopians, all of them. What sets us apart is our culture. How we dress, how we worship our power, the laws we keep. You know what I'm saying? So Shaul speaks Greek. He speaks in the Greek tongue the captain of the guard off. He's like, ain't you an Egyptian? What you doing speaking Greek? How did Paul answer? Go ahead. Um, are not thou that Egyptian, mm -hmm. which before these days made, made us an uproar, Oof. and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murdered? He thought that Paul was the leader of some type of uh, revolutionary movement. You know what I'm saying? That was plotting over the Rome. He was, he was mistaken for an Egyptian, but he was speaking Greek. Go ahead. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. I'm a, I'm a Jew. I'm an Israelite. Nah, nah, I ain't no, no, nah, I'm not no Egyptian. I'm a Jew. Jews get mistaken for Egyptian. Yeah, he was born. He wasn't born in Jerusalem. You feel me? He was one of them that would have been coming back to Jerusalem for Pentecost, but was not born in Jerusalem. You understand? Now, he was uh, sent to Jerusalem as a youth to learn the ways of his forefathers and laws and all that. But he was not born in Jerusalem. Go ahead. A city in Cilicia. Cilicia. Uh -huh. A citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me Allow me to speak to the people. Because there was a mob. The Jerusalem mob was trying to kill Paul. His own people. Because he started following the Messiah. Alright, go ahead. And when he had given him license, mm -hmm. Paul, Paul stood on his first and begged him with the hand unto the people. Mm -hmm. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in Hebrew tongue. See, he was speaking Greek. Hey. Yeah, he was speaking Greek. Right? Staking for an Egyptian, told him I'm a Jew, I'm an Israelite. Feel me? Uh, born in Cilicia, of Tarsus, born in Cilicia. Then he gets to speaking to his people that was trying to attack him in the Hebrew tongue. So when he say, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. You dig? That's what he was saying. We almost done. 
We almost done, little baby tripping. You already know what she on, though. No. She ain't finna. You might as well. You might as well kept her out here. Ah, oh, okay. But now we understand what Shaul was saying when he said that he speak the tongues more than you all. That verse eighteen. Read that verse eighteen at First Corinthians again. First Corinthians fourteen eighteen. See, they don't got that same spirit in the church today. I'd rather speak five words with understanding than 10,000 words in the unknown tongue. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and then if you look at any black church uh, that's depicted in Hollywood, oh, it's all a joke. Jumping up and down. Yeah, it's all. They, they, look, Hollywood don't even take these niggas serious in church. It's all a joke. Huh? Preach Cedric the Entertainer, the preacher, patting his forehead. You feel me? <laughs> Lusting over some big booty woman. What was it? Don't get a minute. Uh, don't get a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but uh, I think little mama caught the Holy Ghost. They grandma slapping everybody. In. It's but, but the but the, the the black church is depicted as a joke. There ain't nobody taking them serious. They're not a threat. They they take the Catholic Church more of a threat than the so-called New York Church. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because there's no understanding coming out of it. It's all a game. All right, go ahead. Um, brethren, be not children in understanding. Mm -hmm. How be it in malice? Be ye children, mm -hmm. but in understanding be men. Be, be men in understanding. Don't be no child in understanding. If you don't know what's being said, how in the hell can we be men? You gotta be, you gotta be grown around here, man. Be children when it comes to malice. In other words, be quicker to, to forgive and all that. Be right back right. Yeah, babies are fighting me right back cool. But when it comes to understanding, be men. And if you don't understand what's being said, now how can you keep the charge of that script you just read? Go ahead, love. In the law, it is written with men of other tongues. Other lips will I speak unto this people? That's Isaiah 28 and, and 11. That's where it's written at. Go ahead. Um, Isaiah 28 and 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Isaiah 28 and 11. In the law, it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Mm -hmm. And yet for all that will they not hear me. Will yeah, people today, you know, they get hung up because we speak English and all that. You know, you read something verbatim in the Bible, now it's a problem. But they say we was going to be speaking a whole nother language. We, we didn't hear the most high in the Hebrew language we spoke. Rebellion. You know what I'm saying? Hell, he's like, look, I'm going to be speaking to y'all another language. Part of that kicked off in Acts, the second chapter. When the gospel got published in all languages. All right? He said, even after that, they still not going to hear me. Go ahead, he wrote. She wrote. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, to, uh, 22. Now, trip off did. This This is a, a scripture right here that they run from. 22. What did it say? Verse 22. Yeah. Yeah. The Pentecostal doctrine. They say you don't have the Holy Spirit unless you speak it in tongues. But all that's getting dismantled right here, ain't it? It's all understanding coming in and love. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know because it's straight madness, man. And look, our people are under a spell up in them churches. And they need to get up out of there. Verse 22, what does it say? Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Oh, wait. Tongues are for the non-believers. You right. see? Tongues are for the non-believers. Why? Because you can, somebody that don't believe, and what you believe, and you got the gift to talk to them about the Son of the Most High in their language. See, tongues is a gift given for it to gain non believers. They run around here talking about they speaking in tongues. So, what was it like? Can you speak my language? Yeah, 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 I can understand what you're saying. And now I can come to the understanding of who the Son of the Most High is and repent. You 
You know what I'm saying? So tongues are for the, the tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but for them that believe not. So if all of us up in church and we believe, what the hell are you speaking in tongues for? It ain't for nobody in here. See, it's completely out of order, and it's a horse and pony show. It's a horse and pony show. It really is. If we all up in church, y'all claim everybody up in here is super saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, what the hell are you doing speaking in tongues if it's for them that believe? Everybody in here believe. And everybody in here speak English. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what the hell? Hey, ain't like nobody in here speak another language. They have no reason to even be speaking to them. Yeah. Should I should about a handa 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 dum club and dum bun dum? It ain't got no reason to be doing all that. For one, all you all you need grow speak English. And all y'all claiming y'all believers, there's no reason to even speak it to them. Come on, love. What else to say? We only going to twenty five, verse twenty five, and then verse forty. Go ahead. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that we are mad? Yeah, they gonna say you all mad. Oh, these niggas crazy. I didn't understand we'll nothing of what they were saying. Go ahead. But if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of because prophesying edifies, it teaches, it brings understanding. So the uh, so the unbeliever can be like, oh yeah, that's the truth. I've been waiting to hear that. We hear it all the time, brother. Thank you for that word, man. All praise to the Most High, bro. Man, you were speaking that right to me, man. All praises to the Most High. But even when you sit in that church, that's that's how the pastor makes you feel when you talking to him. Yeah, but it's real simple. They 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 do crowd study. You know what I'm saying? They do crowd studies. That ain't nothing but the order manipulation. Kenneth Copeland taught Creflo Dollar how to do that. It's real easy. You feel me? And that's madness, though. We shoot straight from the scripture. Now, if the scriptures are convicting you, then that, that was meant for you. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Take heed, repent. But it ain't about the man that was doing it. It was about the scriptures that were being brought out. It ain't because you done walked in with three babies or, four or five babies. Oh, she probably got three baby daddies, you know, on welfare. And you out there giving a, a, a damn sermon over her. <laughs> and you out there fornicating. Now, nah, huh. you see what I'm saying? Like, damn, he must have been talking about me. Nah, nigga, you putting on the show. You studying the crowd. You know what I'm saying? They come in, you know what I'm saying? Dangerous animal shoes on, you know. Look, you know, ain't lacking around the wrist. You know, look what he's driving out there. I think he probably sell a little dope here and there, you know. You know, so then you get to talking about ill gotten gangs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You need to get saved. You feel me? They know how to manipulate the crowd, is all I'm saying. But if you just shooting straight from the script and somebody feel like that, then that's the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's totally different. Than what they do. All right, go ahead. Uh, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. What are made manifest? The of his heart. Yeah, the secrets of his mind. He heard the prophesying, right? He like, man, I need to repent. And now the secrets of his heart or his true character is revealed at this point because he's been edified through prophesying about the coming kingdom. You know, good will, he won't enter that kingdom. I right, go ahead. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you, O church. Yeah, well, he will because he'll be like, Man, look at that word was directly for me, brother. Thank you. I right, jump down to uh, verse 37 and read through 40. That's it for that. If any man think himself to be a prophet mm -hmm. or spirit, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. You see what he's saying? If you spiritual, well, I'm writing the commandments of the Most High. That's what Shaul was saying. He ain't winging this. He ain't making this up. 
this whole chapter, what he's speaking, he said, I'm speaking the commands of the Most High. If he's spiritual, he should be able to discern it. All right. Even when you go back up to this 30, uh, 34, 33 through 35, talking about letting women keep silence in the churches. You feel me? And most of the people that claim they speak in tongues today, Negro women. Negro women. That's why he like, look, command the most high to all the confusion. Let your women keep silence in the church. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. And if they will learn anything that I'm learning from their husbands at home, because people come in there and get the fat mouth. And all Paul Shaul was saying, keep order. It's supposed to be order up in this deal. You know what I'm saying? It don't mean a woman can't raise her hand and ask a question. Or I don't get simple. Some people are like, damn, I can't say nothing. What does that mean? And letting you know, ain't no one supposed to be in her fat mouth. You feel me? Running or, or speaking up based off some damn feelings. Everything supposed to be done in order. You feel me? And if you got that much to say, you should be learning from your husband at home anyway. You know what I'm saying? Even if you hear something that's like, damn, I, I ask him that when I get to the real. It shouldn't be a, a, a feeling fest. Well, hold on. I see. I think it should, uh, nah. No, 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 I can't be that because it'll be confusion within the ranks. You know what I'm saying? And it can't be that. So, go ahead, finish that up. Um, 37. Okay, 38. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brother, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak to the tongue. Yeah, so it, the tongues that you supposed to interpret. Remember, said, if you want to speak in an unknown tongue, pray you may interpret. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Let all things be done decently and in order. All right, now jump back up to verse 27. 27 and 28. If a man speak in an unknown tongue, mm -hmm. let it be by two, or at the most by three, mm -hmm. and that by four, mm -hmm. and let one interpret. Somebody got to interpret. You feel me? You going to speak in an unknown tongue? Two or three? Matter of fact, you, it, it can't just be you there. Because there can't be no private interpretation going on either. So at least need to be two or three of y'all there. You feel me? That understand and can speak what you're speaking. And one of y'all need to be interpreting what's being said. Alright? Next verse. What does it say? But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent. Let him what? Let him keep silent. Let him speak. Keep silent. Let him keep silent. Go ahead. In the church. Uh-huh. Let him speak to himself. If it ain't no interpreter, you're supposed to close your mouth. And they not doing that, man. For one, they can't even interpret it. Let him pray he may interpret it. They say, yeah, I don't supposed to know what's being said. You feel me? Then, if you speak in an unknown tongue, like Hebrew or whatever, and don't nobody know it, it's supposed to be at least two or three of y'all, and one of y'all supposed to interpret what's being said. And if it ain't no interpreter, he say, shut your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Take that home into your own closet. Oh, wait, we just destroyed that whole Pentecostal doctrine in one city. You see that? So all praise. I mean, we can do this more often, though, love. You know, certain topics, chop it up real quick. You know what I'm saying? And get her done. But, uh, that, I mean, but look, that was good to get an understanding about the Pentecost. And then when you speaking to your people, cousins and all them, you're pretty sure they're going to have some questions. You know what I'm saying? You got the scriptures and all that. You go right on the phone. You know if anything, you know you can call me. I ain't no sign. Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. go here and go to this one scripture. Or oh, sure. put me on the phone with him. It ain't no thing. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense. Everything done decently in order. Read that last verse again. 40. Verse 40. Let all things be done decently in order. See, everything's about order with the most high. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about could have shit, shit about a Honda, Honda, Jean Claude Van Damme, Van Damme, cheeses, cheeses, cheeses. It ain't about none of that. You know what I'm saying? If you speak in an unknown tongue, you supposed to pray you can interpret. It's supposed to be at least two or three of y'all. and One of y'all supposed to interpret. If not, you got to close your mouth. But greater is he that prophesied than he that speak in an unknown tongue. Because he can edify the church. Then it say the tongue, the unknown tongue is for the non-believers. Look, paint the scenario. You at church, everybody in here claim they believe. Right? And everybody up in here speak English. These Negroes ain't even bilingual. They speak English. 
You feel me? So it's for the non-believers, but we all believe. And then everybody in here speaks the same language. There's no reason we all be speaking tongues up in church. Mm-hmm. Makes no sense. You see that? So all praise. So we got the understanding on the Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. All right. Kav Shabua. Seven complete Sabbaths following the Passover. Plus one day. Number 50 days. You dig? We'll be out here at the uh, Spanish Lake Park. You know? Yeah, that's right. That's where we used to go we'll walk, walk when, you, when you was uh when you was pregnant. You go walk around the little trail and all that. Same part. The other side though, by the uh, football field and all that. Right. Yeah, it's one more entrance further down. But that's the same part we would be at. You around there walking, both girl telling us some I envy I don't envy you. You know that <laughs> actually. Yep, so with that being said, all praise to the most high, the power God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'm in glory of his only begotten son, long live the king, uh, your brother Malachi Maccabee here with my rib, Amana Maccabee, big, chopping up some script uh, about this holy feast of weeks that's coming up. Uh, y'all be safe and blessed. Yahoo! Get her done.